So rectangles still have all of those properties, properties of parallelograms. But now we're going to find that rectangles add two new properties to the mix, which are just easy to use and hopefully just as easy to remember. The first of which, you might all know this already, all angles in a rectangle are 90 degrees. All angles are 90 degrees. And then our second property for rectangles that's unique to rectangles involves the diagonals. Diagonals are congruent. So not only do the diagonals still bisect each other, now they're also going to be congruent. And we'll see what that looks like as we get started here with number one. So yeah, just like we do, we're going to jump into it. I'll go through the first example just to show you how quickly this can go. I'm not going to hold you left hand. I'm going to warn you, though, that we are going to pull back on a, a timeless theorem first discovered by Pythagoras in ancient Greece at his school of mathematics. So. Each of these quadrilaterals is a rectangle. We need to find the missing measures. First things first, we're going to find QR. And QR is this side. Just like with parallelograms, opposite sides are congruent. So QR is going to be 10. And SR will be 24. Now, the next one that we're going to try to find is SQ. And SQ is this whole diagonal. We don't have a means of finding that directly. I mean like we don't have a means via side lengths or diagonals so we're gonna have to go off the beaten path and forge our own new way. Well here's the here's the key question. This is where the properties of a rectangle come in handy. The angles of a rectangle are all what? 90 degrees or if you will right angles and what that does is that allows us to set up this diagram of a right triangle. Well there are two parts to a right triangle, aside from the right angle. You have legs, and you have a hypotenuse. We're trying to find the hypotenuse, and we have the two legs, which means okay. we are going to use Pythagorean theorem. Now, since SQ is the hypotenuse, that means X is going to be all alone. So I'm going to do it like this. SQ, the work to solve. The two legs here are 10 squared and 24 squared. My hypotenuse is always by itself like this. And what's nice about doing this work is if you don't want to write out every single step, which you don't have to, you can simply write this as x squared is equal, well, I should say x is equal to the square root of all that stuff added together. Good. Now, if you want to do every single step, if you want to, you can add these all together, and you'll get that 676 that Harley's talking about. Or if you just want to do, hey, take the square root of both sides, you can do that as well. There's a couple of ways to do this, a couple of ways to save time and space. You can do that. Square root of 676, because 10 squared is 100, 24 squared is 576. You add those two, bada bing, bada boom. And the nice thing about this is that, yes, we get a nice whole number, 26. So SQ, the whole diagonal, is 26. That whole thing there. 26, and then when it be 13. For what? The PR, isn't that also 26? PR is also 26. PR is the other diagonal, and as we found out, diagonals are congruent. Exactly. Because the diagonals are also bisected, we cut them in half. Yeah. So 26 divided by 2, 13. Now, if you're like me, you see a lot of these as puzzles. That's what math is. Math is just one giant puzzle with many different pieces, rectangles included. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to put all the pieces that I know where they go in place. So for instance, if I'm looking at number two, I'm actually going to move everything where I can put it first. So this 27 is also going to go up here with AB. 
I'll go ahead and put that up there. But the neat thing about this 15 is it goes three other places. It actually goes over here on EC. And then because the diagonals are congruent and bisected, BE is also 15, as is DE. So we got a whole lot of 15s going on. Once I have all of these in place, I can just start listing them over here. AC is a full diagonal. What's the length of AC? 30. All right. What's BD? 30. Because BD is what? It's congruent to that. It's the other diagonal. Uh, what's the length of BE? 15. 15. What about the length of AB? 27. You were ready for that. Good. Now we have to find BC. And BC is this side over here. Well, we don't know that. We don't know what AD is. So what am I going to have to use to find it? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so B. Okay, so since we don't know what BC is, we don't know what AD is, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. We'll set it up like this. BC is a leg, and that means that that's going to be x squared. I'll start it off like this. I'll start it off with x squared. Then the question is, what's the hypotenuse? It is 30. So we're going to have to square that, but that's going to be all by itself on the other side. So. We'll have x squared plus 27 squared equals 30 squared. Exactly. Now, in two steps, we can actually shorten our work down so that way there's not as much. I'll go ahead and move this up just a little bit. What I can do, first of all, to get x by itself, the first step is going to be subtracting 27 squared from both sides. So we would get something like x squared equals 30 squared minus 27 squared. But in the end, we're going to have to take the square root of both sides since we want just an x. So after I subtract 27 squared from both sides, I can square root that. And that's something you can do in your calculator. If you just want to do 30 squared minus 27 squared, get that, then square root it, you can do that. Or you can do the square root of 30 squared minus 27 squared. Yeah. When I put that in my calculator, I'm getting 13.076, which we would round up to 13.1. BC is 37, oh, sorry, 13.1, excuse me. Does anyone remember what, uh, what the squiggly equal sign means? About. About what's the mathematical word for it? It's actually another word that starts with A, approximately. Remember, there's a difference between equals and then this squiggly equals. We just say it approximately means. Now, to say approximately, it's somewhere in the rough neighborhood of. That's basically paraphrasing it. But it's different from equals. We want to be careful. Because technically speaking, x equals that 13.076, and then it goes on. We're going to round it, which gives us the approximation. So if we then turn to look at number three, I think we're working with degrees now. But this is just as easy because now all of our angles are going to end up being 90. We don't have to worry about subtracting and adding from 180 as much anymore. Now it's more 90 than anything. For instance, MJK, well, first of all, MJK is this angle right here. It's the big angle, which means automatically it's equal to what? 90, 90 degrees. But suppose we want to find MJL which is this unknown angle here. Well, if we know that the whole is 90, we know this is 27, guess what? Subtract 27 from 90. Subtract 27 from 90. What does that get us? 63, 63 degrees. Now, the neat thing I want to show you, because like I said, it's a puzzle. That's all a rectangle is in this case. It is a puzzle that we can move pieces around on. Do you remember what I said earlier that rectangles are still parallelograms? Hopefully you'll remember that because we still have the properties of parallelograms. 
it means that we have a bunch of alternate interior angles. And you remember that alternate interior angles are what? Congruent. Congruent. So that's fantastic. So if this top angle here is 27, what's this angle down here? It's also 27 down by L. And then if this is 63, what's this angle down here? Now those are the most basic interior angles. But there's another thing that we can do as well. You've already figured this out. You see, if this piece is congruent to this piece, they're also congruent to what? The other diagonals. And the reason that I'm pointing this out is because each and every one of these triangles are going to be what kind of triangles? Right. Not right. Mm -hmm. They have two congruent sides. Equilateral. E not equilateral. <laughs> isosceles. <laughs> you see, when we draw the diagonals in a rectangle, we draw four isosceles triangles, which means if two sides are congruent, the angles opposite them are congruent as well. Well, Mr. Fager, what the heck does this all mean? If this is 63, what do you think this is? 63. 63. What do you think this is? 63. Great. What do you think this is? 27. And this? 27. Exactly. So I can start drawing these in. Even if we're not going to use all of these, we can still write them in. And we know just about the measure of every angle on this rectangle. Oh, we'll find that. So JLK, we just went and found. We already found it. JLK, that's 63. And then KML, KML is 27. Now we do want to find MNL, and MNL is this one up in here. Even though we don't exactly have a direct measure, we can still find it because MNL is still part of a what? An isosceles triangle, a triangle nonetheless. And triangles always add up to how many degrees? So this 27 plus this 27 should add up with this to get 180. Exactly. So for right now, what I can do, I'm going to take 180, and I'm going to subtract those two 27s, which means I'm adding them. We know the two 27s. We add them together. That's going to get me 54. So 180 minus 54 should be the 126 that Harley said. 126 degrees is that angle up there. Now, in number four, we start off with just one angle, but the same ideas apply. See, if our diagonals are both congruent and they're bisected, that means we basically got four congruent segments. Thus, I'm creating what? Four isosceles triangles. I know that this is 64. How do I find these two angles? Exactly. We first subtract one, uh, sorry, we subtract 64 from 180 to find what the other two angles should add up to. 116 degrees. But then, because this is an isosceles triangle up here, these two angles are equal. So we can just as easily divide 116 by 2. What'd you get? 58. 58 degrees. And if we really wanted to, we could go nuts. No. Really? That bad, huh? Here's the simple, here's the simple part. All right, all right. So if, say that again? Bingo. I was just about to say that. See, if these two at the top are 58, these two down here must also be 58. Those are alternate interior angles. So those two are 58. Just for the heck of getting ahead and working this through, if I want to know what this angle right in here is, how do I find that? Ooh. Why 90? Exactly. Rectangles have four right angles. This up here, this whole angle, is 90 degrees. Well, now we know that the other piece is 58. So 90 minus 58, 32. 32 degrees there. And you can pretty much just figure out that 32 degrees goes in each of these other angles. So let's do this. 
x, w, y. That's x, w, y. This angle is 58. What's the measure of y, x, z? 32 degrees. Then we have w, v, z. Oh, w, v, z is this angle right here. 116. Because this angle up here is 64. And these two angles are what? A linear pair, which is supplementary. These two angles should add up to 180. So we do 180 minus 64. Oh, we already did it. 116 degrees. Isn't it nice when the problem works for you? XWZ should be 90 degrees. Very good. And then XZY. 58. 58. 58. No. I have to. It sounds great. No, it doesn't. It's like tree fitty. Stop. Please stop. Fine. So working with the angles and the measures of a rectangle, not too difficult. I think you've got it. So just to run through five real quick, because I feel like doing it. First, we've got to put everything where it goes. DB is 42. Hey, what is DB? It's a diagonal. It's a diagonal. Very good. AD is another side, 26. And they tell us that DAE is 52. Well, 52 degrees. So AC, well, AC is this other diagonal. Should be 42. Why? Because it's congruent. It's congruent to DB. Good. So we know that AC and DB are both 42. What's the measure of EB? 21. 21. How'd you get that? Half of 42. Take 42 divided by 2, 21. What's the measure of BC? 26. 26. Now, we have to find the measure of AB, which is this top side here. I don't know it. I don't know the side opposite it. So what am I going to have to use? Pythagorean theorem. You got that right. So AB. The question is, is AB the hypotenuse? No. Answer, it is not. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, and the right angle is right here. DB. So DB is the hypotenuse. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have to start off with x squared for AB plus the 26 squared equals my hypotenuse, which is 42. It's not the 21, so be careful with that. Now, same idea. Once again, if you want to, you can start off by subtracting 26 squared from both sides. x squared is equal to 42 squared minus 26 squared. x is equal to the square root of that. If you honestly just want to do that, the, 46, the 42 squared minus 26 squared, and figure out what that is numerically, you can do that. Honestly, I probably should have done that. But if I'm not mistaken, you should get a number like 32.98. Yeah. Does that sound correct? So 32.98, well, the 8's going to round the 9 up. The 9's going to round the 32 up. So this could be approximately, not equal to, but approximately 33. And yes, I do love using the number approximately. It makes me sound smart. Did you say number? I said approximately. No. Did, did you did say, say you the love number using the number approximately? OK, maybe. I don't know. Good news for all of us. I'm recording this, so we'll probably get to look go back and look at that. Yeah, I know, right? Now, finding the measure of ADC. ADC is this angle down here in the bottom. Should be 90 degrees. That's a right angle. All right, let's do this. Uh, ADB, or ABD, excuse me. ABD is this angle over in here. Well, to know this angle, we probably want to know this top angle here. How do I find that? 90 minus 52. 90 minus 52. What'd you get? 38. 38. So this is 38. This is 38. And we can pretty much just find any other angle here. BCA is this angle right here. What's that equal to? 52. It's opposite and across from, or just alternate interior. Should be 52 degrees. And then DEC. DEC is this angle right here. 
Um, what are these two angles down here? 38. 38. They're both 38. And what happens if we add 38 together with 38? So we're going to have to take 180 and subtract 76. You'll get 104. Just as a little note, if you really need it, 38 plus 38 equals 76. <coughs> Any questions so far? No. Cool. So hmm? But if we look at the back, uh, I think we're going to skip number six because you know how to set this Are one up. Are you kidding me? Y nope. Nope. I'm not kidding you. Number six is easy to set up because these are opposite sides. Opposite sides are congruent. You know how to solve for x. Then you're just going to plug it into Fe or Ef. So it doesn't matter. I want to talk about number seven first because we have RT. RT is equal to 5x minus 14 and US is equal to 2x plus 10. What do you notice about RT and US? They're both diagonals. Because? Diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. So yeah, we'll start off with that. I'm going to change my colors real quick. 5x minus 14 equals 2x plus 10. I don't know. I forget. I did all that math in my head during asking. Then that's amazing. You're good. Whoop. Subtract 2x from both sides, and you can also add 14 to both sides. Let's see here. 5x minus 2x is 3x. 3x equals 24. 3x equals 24. 5x minus 14 equals 3x. What does x equal? x equals 8. Now, the tricky piece. I'm already jumping the gun. They want us to find vt. And vt is on rt, so where should I probably plug an 8 into? Which x? Wait, five x minus fourteen. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so R T. Now, really, you could plug it into either or, but since we're looking for V T and that's on R T, might as well keep it simple. So R T is equal to five times eight minus fourteen. I just plugged in eight for x. What is this? Yep, because five times eight is forty. Forty minus fourteen. Is that 26? So VT is 13. VT should be equal to 26 oh. divided by 2, yeah, which is that 13. Yeah. You said 26 after the VT. Yeah, like 26 that. divided by 2 equals 13. I'm recording a video, so I have to explain it. Not everybody's going to get this as easily as you guys will. Now, personally, I'd like to keep it going with the odds. I like number 9. Number nine, number nine is a better problem. It just is. Because in number eight, you've got JM, which is this piece, and MK, which is that piece. And inherently, they are congruent because you've got these two pieces. They're both half of a diagonal. But of course, I want you to think. That's the whole point of problem solving, using your brain. See, if I look at number nine, VW is equal to 9x minus 11. And SU is equal to 16x minus 12. What do you notice about VW and SU? VW is only half of a diagonal, whereas <laughs> SU is a full diagonal. Exactly. So if I were just to, what? Well, let me use colors to help you out. See, if we do this using, I don't know, red and blue, perhaps, VW it's just this piece right here. That's that 9x minus 11. On the other hand, SU is a full diagonal. So the question then comes down to, how are we going to balance this out? That's kind of what I figured. Okay. So another way of thinking about it, if you were to work your way through this, Please don't. Okay. If you were to work your way through this, another way of figuring this out is to say, hey, if this is 9x minus 11, this is also 9x minus 11, at which point in time you have 2. 
That's why we're going to take that 9x minus 11 and times it by 2. Would it be 18x minus 22? Yep. Sure enough, 2 times 9 is 18x. 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. This is equal to 16x minus 12. How'd you get that? Perfect. If we subtract 16x from both sides, we'll be left with 2x. And adding 22 to both sides leaves us with 10. What does x equal? 5. Now, the question in hand, we're trying to find wt. wt is this piece right here. Well, plug it in at w. Plug it in the 9x yeah, plug it into the 9x minus 11. Using the properties of a rectangle, I've already put the 9x minus 11 there. So. Yep. Which is 34. Very good. So W T is 34. Exactly. Like Emma said, 9 times 5 is 45. If you subtract 11, you'll get 34. And that's the measure of W T, which is what we we're trying to find. Can we do 10? <coughs> sure, we'll do 10. Does that mean we don't have to do 11? I'd love to set up 11, just so you know how to do it. Yes? So let's skip 10. I have a question. Since we plugged it into VW, wouldn't we have to divide it by 2? No, because VW is still just this piece. It's still half of the whole diagonal. Oh, okay. If, if we wanted to find, say, I mean, if we wanted to find maybe like SW, we could plug it into SU, but then we'd have to divide by 2. I read it wrong. I was okay. I got you. I got you. Okay, so number 10, as requested, there's a simplistic. Take it back, I don't request it anymore. Why? Uh, we're still doing number 10. You asked, we're doing number 10. I'm sorry, you guys. These are alternate interior angles, so they're equal. 7x plus 5 is equal to 11x minus 3. Yes, I love alternate interior angles. If you subtract 7 from both sides, or 7x, you'll be left with 4x. And adding 3 both sides gets you 8. So 8, x equals 2. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, B, C, E. Ooh. Wait, where did you say we were plugging the 2 into? Yeah, we can do that. Plug it into 11x minus 3. Let's see. 19. We're going to have 11 times 2 minus 3. That's 22 minus 3. That's 19. But that's the measure of this angle right here. Exactly. We have one more step to that. Because we want to find BCE, which is this up here. Yeah. The measure of angle BCE is equal to 90 minus that 19, 71 degrees. Boom. Okay, I figured it out. I'm so smart. Okay, cool. Now, the reason I want to talk about number 11, we'll at least talk setup real quick here. See, we're trying to find the measure of, well, we're trying to find the value of x. Before we can find the value of x, we have to create an equation. Now, both of these angles are right next to each other, but they're in one of the corner angles. And those should add up to what? Yeah. Both of these angles being in the corner should add up to 90 degrees. So our equation, just to write it down, will be 3x plus 2 plus 12x minus 17. Can you just combine like terms and set it equal to 90? Yes. I like writing out the whole equation, partially because, again, recording the video. You're only writing it out for the video. Yeah, darn right I am. Because it's important to show everybody. Not everybody's going to be here in this class. Hopefully this video can be used by other people in the future. Good for them. Mm. So yeah, you'll combine like terms, then solve for x. Um, which one are we doing, 12 or 13? 13. 12. 13. We'll talk about the setup then. How's about that? See, we've got, let's see here. Where am I going with this? Looking at number 12, we need to think about where else that 5x minus 8 can go. These angles can be moved around a little bit. 
So, uh, if I use alternate interior angles, believe it or not, either one of these can be moved. Which one do you want to move? The x plus 20 or the 5x minus 8? x plus 20. Let's move it. So where else is that? Uh, Please stop. Okay. So the x plus 20, the question is where else can it go? Using alternate interior angles, because uh, it's not just alternate interior angles, because the rectangle is symmetric. Angle what? Angle. Yeah. It'll go up here. It can go over here, it can go up here, but it can also go up here. So I'm also going to note that x plus 20 goes in this little angle here. Well, then it's just like the previous problem. These two angles are right next to each other, the x plus 20 and the 5x minus 8, which means they should add up to 90, 90 degrees. And if you really want to combine like terms first, you can do that. Oh, yeah. x plus 5x is 6x, 20 minus 8 is 12, should add up to 90 degrees. And then yes, if you want to go off and solve it, solve it. In the meantime, number 13. In order to solve for 13, we have to uh, figure out really, we should probably figure out what this angle next to the 134 is. Does anybody know it already? All right. Josiah? 46. Now how'd you get that that's 46? Perfect. If you do 180 minus the 134 there, you'll get 46. Now that can be helpful in a number of ways, but if we're trying to solve for x, uh, we need to figure out what that angle itself equals. So, number of ways to go about this. Let me do this for you to kind of show you what I would do. We want to know what this angle is going to be equal to. Well, we already know that this is 46. And since we're looking at an isosceles triangle, that means these two things are equal. So I could work backwards and subtract 146 from 180, but we already know what that is. It's 134. In order to find out what 5x plus 7 equals, I just have to take that 134 and divide by 2. 134 degrees divided by 2 is going to give me 67. And that's the measure of both these angles here. So 5x plus 7 is equal to 67. And if you go to solve from there, what? Yep. Subtract 7 from both sides. 5x will equal 60. Divide by 5. x equals 12. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions?